Well, today I thought we might make a video on um, radio spectrum management. Uh, so this is New Zealand Radio Spectrum Management. Um, they have a very good site that I think everyone who's involved in the radio industry in New Zealand should be fully aware of and should spend some time on here looking at relevant documents. But anyway, the easy way to find it is go to Google and type in Radio Spectrum Management. There it is. And uh, this is what Google finds. Radio Spectrum Management, uh, RSM, www.rsm.gov.nz. Now if we click on here, you should find the home page. A very useful site, as I said. Um, there's lots of information in here, particularly licenses down here. Um, information on frequencies anyone can use. Um, there's also um, public information brochures, which are very important, and probably for the purposes of this video, the most important one is PIB 58. I bought up PIB 58, as you can see in the top corner. But what we'll do, first of all, is we'll have a look at licenses. And when you have a look at licenses, this is the first thing you see which is not very informative. But um, we'll start by typing in here ENX 57. So that's Echo November X-Ray 57. Um, as you can see from this screen, there's a large number of users throughout New Zealand using this particular license. Now in Northland, we actually have Matariki Forests. It's um, colloquially named Rainier 57, and that's their license. It's an all-New Zealand license. Um, there's their license number, or license ID number, sorry. Um, but we have uh, other users using that same license. Uh, Cochrane and Sun Logging uh, use that license in the Northland area. Uh, Te Roa Commercial Development. There's their license there, 182245, in the Northern region. Um, and we also have Summit. There's Summit Forests, New Zealand Limited. They have an all New Zealand license. Um, the license number is 198350. What we're going to do is we're just going to have a quick look at um, these um, channels. We'll come down here to Cochrane and Sun and we'll click on this information here, 179096. So this is the license for Cochrane and Sun. Actually, they have two frequencies, E and X57 and E and X85. That's all right. Um, there's the engineer who certified it. Um, there's the uh, emission and the power. Now, we need to go into the conditions tab here, and you will see a CTCSS tone B6, which is 118.8 Hz shall be used on all radio apparatus covered by the license. That's pretty straightforward. CTCSS shall be used on all radio apparatus covered by the license. We will go back, use the back button, come back to this page and use the back button again. And we get back to here. So we've had a look at um, Cochrane and Sons logging. Let's have a look at this uh, TRO commercial development at 182245. Here they are. This one was um, created by uh, William Waterworth. He was the certifying engineer. They've obviously got a large bunch of frequencies, ENX 11, 19, 47, 57, 73, and 84, uh, in both the Auckland region and the Northern region. There's ENX 57. And if we come up here to the conditions, 
we will see a um, coded squelch system of B11, which is 167 decimal 9 hertz, shall be used on all radio apparatus covered by the license. Um, and there's a little bit of a description about here about co-channel interference must be tolerated and the service is shared and um, the channels that must or may only be used for forestry purposes are those ones there, ENX 19, ENX 57 and ENX 84. So you'll, you've already seen that there's um, two different CTCSS tones. Let's back our way back out of here and have a look at Summit Forests. Here's Summit Forests. We've got an all New Zealand license. And we'll go in and have a look at this. Um, again, this one's created by uh, William Waterworth. Um, these guys have a large number of frequencies. They're a, a forestry organization in Northland. Um, there's ENX 57. Uh, interesting, it looks like they have both uh, analog and uh, digital modulation. That's very interesting. And we'll go into the conditions tab here and see what the conditions are. A coded squelch system and or CTCSS tone shall be used on all radio apparatus covered by the license. Um, and again, it's a shared service, so co-channel interference must be tolerated. So it's pretty obvious that CTCSS tones are um, uh, very definitely a requirement of licenses today. But what I've just been showing you is um, uh, the proper technique for uh, determining uh, radio licenses or information about radio licenses. What we do now is we're going to search and we're going to use the frequency box here. We're going to put in a frequency I'm aware of 150 decimal 175 and we'll search for this. We are looking for a license for C3. There it is there. 177381 C3 Limited. All New Zealand port areas is where it can be used. Okay, so we will have a quick look at that license. Uh, this license is obviously put together by Brian Davis and goodness look at what they've got uh, by the look of these most of these are in the F band D band although there's one C band channel there well, these are obviously all at UHF frequencies 455 megs and above. They have one VHF channel in ENX 10. It's analog modulation, vertical polarization, there's its frequency 151750. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the conditions. Oh, a coded squelch system and or CTCSS tone should be used on all radio apparatus as covered by this license. But interestingly, it doesn't actually specify the CTCSS tone. But it shall be used. Okay, we'll back out of here. And back out of here. Hmm. Back up again. We'll go into the search register again. Now recently I had a, an inquiry about a, a new forestry operator and all I knew about this operator was it was called IFS Growth. So we'll put in here IFS. 
and we will search and see what we get. Hello, here we have IFS growth. Now I was told that they had two channels, a channel called IFS1 and another channel called IFS2. Now which one it is, I don't know. Um, there's very little information here. There's obviously EEX21 and EEX57. Um, but it doesn't tell us which one is IFS1 and which one's IFS2. Let's have a look at the details of the license. Okay, this one was created by Anthony Douglas Brown. Um, all North Island. Um, granted on the 23rd of February 2018. Let's go to the conditions tab. And we have a CTCSS tone of 94.8 shall be used on all radio apparatus covered by the license. Oh, there's a, um, a DMR code as well. And again, the same piece of advice. This is a shared service and any co-channel and interference must be tolerated. Let's go back to the license. And yes, Look at that, there's a analog modulation and digital modulation. For both of them in actual fact. Uh, now, because we don't know which of these channels is IFS1 and which is IFS2, you could probably guess, but that's not really appropriate. Let's click on here, 528820, and see if we can find some information about IFS Growth Limited. And we have a client number, and we have a registered company. Uh, and let's see what we've got in address and contacts. Look at that, 33A Main Street, Gore. I don't know who Liz Trodel is. There's no business phone number. Okay, so I'm guessing that if we needed to find out more information about this particular license and uh, which channel they consider to be IFS1 and which channel they consider to be IFS2, um, it would be appropriate to um, actually uh, ring IFS Growth themselves and ask that question. Anyway, you can, by use of a license search, find out quite a lot of detail. Now, there's a couple of things that aren't included um, on typical licenses, and those kind of extra conditions really need to be detailed by the company themselves. Um, a couple of good examples. If, if the company um, wished to operate their channels uh, low power, then um, uh, I'm suggesting that they need to actually specify that. Or if the channel needs to have, say, five-tone A and I on it, um, or the channel is to be used for some specific purpose. Uh, then I'm going to suggest that the owner of the channel, and this channel here is IFS Growth, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to splice into this video a what I call a song sheet, which actually specifies how the channel is to be used and whether or not it's high power or not, and any particular conditions that relate to that channel. Anyway, um, if you're behaving in a professional manner um, and you're advising a, a company um, who's going to issue a license and they wish for their channels to be used in a specific fashion, then I'm going to suggest that one of these song sheets should be created and um, uh, 
um, distributed to the radio dealers and also the, the company themselves. Um, uh, obviously, they can distribute it to their subcontractors and other people who um, they are um, allowing to use their license.